Hey y'all, what's up? Today I wanted to talk to you about how to identify the root of your perfectionism. Perfectionism is something that a lot of my clients deal with, a lot of women that I talk to about business, a lot of women who are in leadership and are in positions of influence deal with perfectionism. And as I was writing my book today, I talked a little bit about the difference in between the waiting season and the preparation season and the birthing season. And when I looked at those three things, I said, well, why do people confuse their waiting with their preparation with their birth season? Oh, the confusion of the seasons comes from how they are showing up at that time point and what they're expecting when they show up in that certain light. And I started talking a little bit deeper about perfectionism versus excellence because it says in the Bible we should operate in excellence and do things in excellence. And we tend to think perfectionism means excellence, but those two things are actually completely separate. My recommendation is always when you have identified and become self-aware that you are dealing with perfectionism or anxiety or procrastination your next immediate step is to identify the root of that emotion so that you can process and place where those emotions are going to go and decide what you need to let go of in order to move forward and serve the next level of who God is calling you to be as a woman. So today I'm giving you some tips on how to identify the root of your perfectionism. The first thing you want to do is you want to reflect on your past. Everything that we do, it all originates from a subconscious behaviors and subconscious behaviors come from conscious things that have happened to us. When things happen to us in the past, even if they are not traumatic, of course, if traumatic things happen to you in the past, you are going to carry those things with you deep in your subconscious. It influences a lot of your decision making and your emotions around certain situations, certain people. But even on a non-traumatic level, it helps for you to look backwards before you look forward and identify what is the starting point of this? What was this first memory where I had this experience with having a higher standard than where I currently was? It may not even be a higher standard compared to other people, but if it's a higher standard versus where you were at the time, then that gap, if that gap is really wide in between where you were and the standard that you were given, perfectionism is, perfectionism is going to naturally arise because it feels like perfectionism to you. And start digging and saying, what in my past has happened to me that is similar to what is currently happening to me and how am I processing that? The second thing you need to do is identify your fears. What are your fears around not being perfect? I want you to ask yourself, what are my fears behind not being perfect? Like what's gonna happen if I don't show up in this perfectionist state? What's gonna happen if I don't meet this standard? So you play a little bit of role play with yourself where you kind of look at what happens if this doesn't happen for me? I mean, we know perfectionism is not a real thing. We feel a little bit better the closer we get to perfectionism, but when you look at what happens when you you know, what we're actually fearing by not being a perfectionist, that reveals what our motivators are. Fears can be really strong motivators. Your ultimate desire as an entrepreneur is to have more control over your motivators. That way you can be motivated when you want to be motivated. You can put your best foot forward when it's time. You can rest when it's time. You can make money when it's time. If you have a very strong sense of what your motivators are, you know how to put yourself in a situation where you can perform without having to actually have your back against the wall. Okay, so fears are, are very strong motivators. Pleasures are motivators too. There are things that we really, really desire and really want and we can use those as motivators. A lot of times coaches will have you define your why. That's a positive motivator, right? That's a desire motivator. But fears are also motivators. So you don't wanna just focus on this is my passion, this is my why and then not address the fears because the fears can actually be stronger motivators. And for most of us, our fears are stronger motivators. We're more afraid of what's gonna happen if we don't hit success versus being excited about what is going to happen for us when we become successful or reach that milestone that we've set for ourselves. The third thing you wanna do is acknowledge your insecurities. We know now on an individual level what happens if you're not perfect 
we know that you've identified fears of either success or fears of, of failure or fear of letting someone down, right? Fear of, of shame or feeling like you're less than or going to be seen as less than an expert or less, less experienced. And so now it's time to acknowledge those insecurities. Oh, this fear comes from my lack of fill in the blank, whatever you think your lack of is. Now, for some of you guys, your lack of is going to be a real lack of, hey, my fear comes from people not seeing me as an excerpt, ex expert. That insecurity is rooted in my lack of formal education. That's a real thing. You can have a lack of formal education. But for some of you, your lack of fill in the blank is not actually a real thing. But you won't know until you acknowledge what is it specifically that you are insecure about. Here's the great thing about insecurities. They're either real and you can actually adjust your insecurities or they're not real and you can adjust your mindset around the insecurities. You can always become a better person. You can always go get an extra certification if that's going to make you feel better. You can always go get another degree. I'm not anti-degree. I'm not anti-job ex experience. I'm not anti-career, right? I am pro whatever is going to get you to your goal. <laughs> I am I'm a mindset coach for competitive perfectionist leaders. I'm pro whatever's going to get you to the goal, whatever's going to get you to the champion championship, right? Whatever you consider your championship to be. It, it's better for you to acknowledge what your insecurities are and then decide, does it make sense for me to work on improving my insecurities right now? Because in some senses, it doesn't even make sense. Like if your insecurity is, I don't have such and such degree, but that degree is not a requirement in order for you to reach your goals, then you have to look at it objectively and say, well, maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe that's not a requirement. I'm clear on the fears. Let's face the fears. It, it seems scary. It's a lot easier when you have a coach, but let's face the fears now that the fears are out there. The hardest part for most women is saying what that fear is. That's the hardest part. Admitting, out, admitting it out loud is the hardest part. Acknowledging I'm insecure in this area or this area or this area out loud is the hardest part. Once you've done that, then you can kind of look from the outside in and be like, hmm, is that serving me to step into who God's calling me to be or not? Your last step is to assess your environment. Thus far, we've reflected on the past and we understand where these feelings are coming from. We're identifying the fears that have been caused by these feelings. These fears are the byproducts of the feelings and experiences that we've had in the past. And then we've acknowledged what our personal insecurities are and assessed whether it makes sense or not for us to hold on to those insecurities and work on them. Or does it make more sense to let go of those insecurities and regulate ourselves to love who we are right now in the moment. Regardless, you should love who you are right now in the moment, but it's okay for you to identify areas where you want to improve. So the last step, assessing your environment. Because if you are experiencing perfectionism and you wish that you were not, okay? So you're, you're feeling a sense of perfectionism and feeling like you have to hit that goal or you have to do it that certain way. And if you can't do it that certain way, you're not gonna do it at all. Your perfectionism is paralyzing you and it's important important for you to look and see, are there environmental factors that are causing me to buy into this paralyzing perfectionism that is ultimately keeping me stuck? Like that's what we're looking for. So are there influences? Are there people that you're following where you're looking at what they have and thinking what they have is better than what I have. And if I want to attain what they have, I've got to get it to a perfectionist level, which would be even better than what they're doing. So looking at, do you have influences or are you following someone on social media or following people on social media that are putting you in a bubble of comparison syndrome? You know this, think about it. Who am I following? How do I feel when I see people's, certain people's content? Do I feel like I'm not doing enough? Do I feel like I'm not working hard enough? Do I feel like I'm not putting enough time or enough energy to, into this when I look at certain people's content? And it doesn't mean that that person is a bad person and it doesn't mean that you're wrong for following them, but it could just be having a negative side effect on where you currently are right now and it's okay to take a break and unfollow that person. You also have to look at what is it that you are striving for and are these standards 
or are, are these expectations that you're trying to attain originating from you or are they originating from other places? Environmental, who is it that you're around? For some of us, this is gonna be family. This is gonna be my siblings or my parents. They've got these standards and these expectations that are a lot farther ahead than where I am now. And do they want the best for me? Yes, but me adopting their standards and their expectations is now causing me to strive outside of reality. In business and as a leader, it's not about perfectionism, it's about progress. And success as a God-fearing woman is about doing things in excellence, which means not doing things to perfection, but excellence means doing as much as you possibly can with what you currently have, where you currently are. Excellence is doing as much as you possibly can with what you currently have, where you currently are. Perfectionism is 100% perfect. Doesn't matter what you have, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter where you came from. But it does matter who you are. It does matter what you have and it does matter where you came from. And that's why you start to feel a lot of stress and anxiety because you're worrying about things that are outside your means of control. So you have to do a check here. Whose standards am I living my life by? Whose expectations am I living my life by? And if I say to myself, perfectionism is making $100,000 in 12 months and I make $80,000 in 12 months, but I'm stressed out the whole time. But before I was making the $80,000 in 12 months, I was only making $60,000 in 12 months. You reached a standard of excellence. Was it perfectionism no because it wasn't 100k but is it farther than where you where you were before and did you do everything that you possibly could with what you had for where you are and if the answer is yes you operated in excellence so my invitation to you if you're dealing with perfectionism is to focus more on operating in excellence but also to take these four steps and identify the root of your perfectionism because that's gonna give you more information to really start unraveling where these emotions are coming from. Because it's not enough to just say, perfectionism, let it go. It doesn't work that way, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, we'd all be like, perfectionism, it's no longer serving me, it's not helping me step into who God is calling me to be, I'm just gonna let it go, but it's not that easy. When you work with a mindset coach and you take these steps, then it becomes easier because you're able to take yourself out of it and look at it from the outside in and say, wow, this is not really conducive for what I'm trying to do. That starts to draw a clear line between here are things that I can control to help me let go of perfectionism and here are things that I cannot control and I'm just gonna let go and give it to God. So hopefully this video helped you. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I will see y'all in the next video. See y'all later. Check the description box below. Bye, y'all.